Hi guys, it's PS. We're going to continue learning from analyzing RSK legendary games. If you missed out the previous video, go ahead and watch it first. Today, we'll watch from mid game of game 3. Let's get started. The game is at 12 minutes. Basically, at this point, 1v1 laning phase is almost over, and the game is slightly in favor of Blue Team, who started to snowball using early lane priorities. Well, Red Team doesn't want to let Blue Team snowball the game so fast. So Ambition who's playing Sejuani plans a gank at mid after failing at top. Here, we need to focus on Wolf who's playing Nautilus. On Pro's Habits episode 4, 5, and 6, we focus on support's roaming timing. If you watch those videos, it's easier to understand the current situation. Enemy bot pushed the wave and recalled, and Kalista recalled first and needs to farm the leftover CS. These mean that Nautilus can roam. Especially it was a good time for Red Team to slow down the game, so jungle and support planned a precise mid gank. Now let's focus on the fight. Cassidy ulted to the front first and retreated right away to act like a simple trade. LeBlanc uses W to the front since Lee is around as well. At the same time, Nautilus was walking to mid and joins the fight, and Sejuani uses ult to LeBlanc as LeBlanc doesn't have W anymore, but LeBlanc dodges it with ult. But since Nautilus is right there, she has to flash, and Lee flashes as well. Eventually, if Nautilus didn't roam, it was gonna be 2v2 fight which Blue Team could have won by a counter gank. However, Wolf's proper roaming timing and knowing that it would be 3v2 fight, LeBlanc and Lee had to waste their flash. You know, it's especially harder to force LeBlanc waste her flash. But Ambition's bold decision to ult, Wolf's roaming, and Dada's act were perfect. This could seem like Team Noxus dodged the gank well, but Team Demacia didn't invest much and got two flashes almost for free. And it would be better if they make a play while Lee and LeBlanc have no flash. At 14 minute, we're in the similar situation. Blue team pushed the wave and now are recalling, and Kalista has to farm the CS. So Wolf and Ambition are planning another mid gank who doesn't have flash. But one thing that's different from the previous scene is that Mad Life, who's playing Braum, predicted the gank. He sent Varys home and roams to mid. Since Braum is around, Pawn is baiting now. LeBlanc used all of her abilities on Cassidy, and Sejuani ults right away to punish LeBlanc, and Cassidy uses Flesh ult as well to secure the kill. And here we can see unbelievable Mad Life's clutch. He first shields LeBlanc with Guardian, exalts on Cassidy on the perfect timing, and blocks Nautilus's hook by the shield to save LeBlanc. Then, Braum almost dies but flashes away and uses Stopwatch to survive from Sejuani's W. This was beautifully done and counterplayed every possibility. And while he was holding the fight longer, Varys, Kennen, and Lee all joined and sweep the fight. This result is not a coincidence. It was all planned out, and we can know from their shot callings. Additionally, we can see a very smart play by Marion at top. Back to 1444, we once reviewed Top Nocturne in the past that he can alt and teleport to join any fights globally. If you see the minimap, as Ambition engages the fight, Marion keeps Nocturne from ult and teleporting, so Looper couldn't teleport due to Cannon. After body checking, Cannon teleports first and leaves no space for Team Demacia to make another play. It was a beautiful skilled play of Marin, who was knowledgeable in teleport. It's kinda unfortunate for Team Demacia, they planned out everything so well, and if they landed one or two more skill shots, it could have turned out better. But another fun point is that Team Noxus only gets a turret while Team Demacia takes another dragon since the fight was slightly off from dragon region timing. This becomes a huge snowball later on. Let's see another interesting team fight at 6 and 45. In the previous fight, enemy used all the summoner spells, so Ambition engages a fight right away. Then while enemy was focusing Braum, Insta kicks Kalista by Q War W combo and hits Nautilus as well. Prey ults as soon as he's kicked, and Wolf body slams Piglet to save Prey. Dada and Ambition kill Insect who's too deep after kicking Prey. Meanwhile, Looper teleports and ults on Piglet. Even though it becomes a kill trade, it's better for Nocturne since Varys has a bounty gold. We can see Marin's ult and Pawn trying to protect Piglet. As soon as Piglet dies, Marine dashes to Ulf and Ambition with ult and protobelt. Lastly, Pawn chases after Dada and results a huge win. Every player knew what to do and played it out accordingly. Replaying and learning from these fights help players learn the best possible place. It's possible they may be making bad decisions in the fight subconsciously. From now on, we'll focus more on team fights. 
We believe you watched the third game more fun since there were a lot of fights. It's the third team fight. LeBong and Kenan are seen at top and bottom respectively. The best fight while behind is to fight with number advantage and kill quickly. Without hesitation, Looper and Wolf ulted mid. Especially, Wolf made many good engages in this game. Piglet flashes right away as he checks, and Medlife exhausts Nocturne and ults Kalista as well. So Ambition ults Ferris to secure the kill in case he survives. However, this somehow became an overinvestment and ends up losing to Team Noxus. If at least Sejuani survived here, this whole play could have been just to slow down enemy's macro. However, Team Nox is punished hard. At this point, Team Demacia's plan isn't to make a super play and win a fight, but to turtle and scale for a late game. So when you're behind, think about how to make number advantage and win a fight for trade kills. <laughs> Following with Medlife's predicted Q. We could see Wolf's wonderful play to delay Varus' scaling. In other words, even with 7k gold down, Team Demacia is okay as long as Team Noxus doesn't take Baron. For sake of Team Noxus, they want to take Baron. But soon after, we see a very important team fight that starts a comeback of Team Demacia. This time, Ambition engages a terrific team fight. Let's slow down and watch the fight. Watch each player's decisions at the very moment. First, while camping in the bush, Ambition's W on the rift removes Pawn's Banshee's Veil. Wolf doesn't miss the opportunity and hooks Blanc. And Madlife W on Blanc right away, as well as Marine's teleport. Looper also teleports to group. Then, while Piglet was careless since Pawn was in front of him, Ambition also on Piglet. Even though Madlife sticks to Piglet, without Brahm's shield, Piglet dies. Normally, we think it's one player's fault since we can't hear team's voice chat. However, in pro team games, most of these mistakes are due to team's wrong decision. If we listen to the shot callings, they say, I'll get the turret and let's take the turret Sejuani has halt. They said to destroy the turret, and LeBlanc was standing in the front, which caused the sin. To make up the play, Insect goes in and Insect kicks Prey. As they see Insect kick, Pawn and Marine flash toward Prey. But Prey flashes away before getting damage and dodges major ults, and Lee Sin goes down. Even though Wolf takes all the AoE damage and died, Kenan, LeBlanc, and Braum were crowded together to kill Prey, and Dada kills all of them. This is the first huge victory from Team Demacia. Eventually, Team Noxus didn't make a certain call under the enemy's turret, and they missed an opportunity to play around Baron. But Pawn earns some time with LeBlanc and stops Team Demacia from Baron Tribe. We'll skip a few team fights and see how they came back. This is when Team Demacia is snowballing with two dragon stacks. If Team Noxus had all the dragons, this dragon would have been the soul. But since Team Demacia had two dragons, Looper without teleport didn't bother to group. He can manage the lane and recall. However, Team Noxus uses this time wisely. Naturally, they would just take the dragon, but they decide to turn to mid and kill Sejuani. If Ambition didn't die here, Nocturne could have pressured to tier 2 turn. Now it's going to late game where Team Demacia gets stronger. They stalled Baron long enough for Nocturne and Cassidy to scale well. Then, as they check Team Noxus at mid and top, Nocturne uses his advantage of mobility and ability to assassinate, and he forces Kennen to flash. Team Noxus couldn't put more than two players at bot, or they will lose Baron vision control. So, Marine has to clear the wave alone. After this, Dada and Looper pressures the tier 3 turret at bot. To not get swayed by this play, enemy has to either try or bait Baron. But Team Noxus quickly turns to bot and kill Cassidy without leaving Baron alone too long. This is a great success right before Dragon. However, this doesn't lead to Soul nor Baron, which can be interpreted as a simple death. Personally, we think this is the most boring point of the current meta. Riot made the early snowball speed adequately, but there aren't many choices to knock out the enemy in mid to late game. Back to the game, Cassidy finally hits level 16. Then here, Ambition makes a critical mistake. Alt was almost back up, but he engaged thinking that he had it. 
we'll see the calls they made. Okay, now we'll go to the left. Let's go, let's go. 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 Now it's the most important moment. Team Noxus can now take the soul, so Team Demacia has to face fight. First, Varus has to recall before the dragon. Even though dragon is still 2 minutes away, they have to stay for vision control. And during this time, Sejuani smites on cannon to remove Banshee's fail and also to engage. Actually, this team fight was set up from 3245 from Wolf's Deep Warden mid. This war sees Piglet recalling, and once Team Demacia knows that Varus is at base, they could pick a fight. This is the main point of today's video. When you're behind, make a number advantage and engage boldly. To make sure to have a number advantage, get vision even though it might be tough when you're behind. The result was 2 to 1 trade. Let's watch another dragon fight. Before a dragon fight, the most important thing is mid push priority. This never gets old. Push the wave, get vision, and form a position. Since Team Noxus had the mid push priority and 3 dragons, they could decide whether to hit the dragon first to pick a fight, just clear waves and look for a bait, or give up dragon and get barren vision. But these are just possible choices, and they probably wanted to take the soul since Team Demacia scales better. Team Demacia doesn't want to give up dragon, so they are forced to be at the dragon. So Team Noxus plans a better team fight picture with mid push priority. Then they see Sejuani in the jungle and engages a fight with LeBlanc's chain. They were going to kill Sejuani first while others are at the dragon. But Sejuani can tank everything including Varus' ult with Gargoyle and ult. And his team quickly follows up with Nocturne's ult, Cassidy's flesh, Kalista's ult, and ultimately wins the fight. Team Noxus wasn't coordinating together enough to flank Sejuani. We can also see this as Team Com's difficulty gap, that Team Noxus has to protect Varus, while Team Demacia only needs to go for Varus. The game is basically over here since Team Demacia's comp is so much stronger at this point. We'll end the review of the third game of RCK here. As we discussed, as the game goes to mid to late game, it's more of which team can plan and have a better team fight, what additional gain they can have after a team fight, and knowing each champion's goal in mid to late team fights to win a game. Especially, this game is helpful to understand how to come back. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.